Now, by default, stored PL SQL runs with definers' rights. So what does that mean? The code runs with all of the direct privileges of the user who owns the code. So the person who creates the code has a certain number of privileges. Those are the privileges with which the code runs, and also the privileges used to compile it, compilation as well as runtime. And if the owner, the definer of the code, references any objects on which he does not have permissions, the code won't compile. Furthermore, if the permissions are removed later on, it won't run. The invoker, therefore, needs nothing at all other than execute privileges on the code itself. Now, this was how PL SQL works when it first came in, stored PL SQL in release 7. Oracle always said that this was a good thing. Definers rights code mean that users can be granted minimal privileges. All access to data is controlled through the PL SQL. Well, okay, but think of it from the other direction. From the other direction, a low privileged user who has been granted execute privileges on code is inheriting massive privileges from the developer whenever he runs the code. The invoker inherits the owner's privileges during that call. So unless that code that he's running is absolutely perfectly written, there's the potential for the invoker to abuse those privileges. There are many, many ways to get highly privileged SQL injections through stored PL SQL if the code is not written in an appropriate way with security in mind. Another point to emphasize is not really privileges, it's resolving object references. Uh, if the code refers to tables, views, synonyms, all those object references, unless of course they're fully qualified with a schema name, will be resolved in the definer's schema, not the invoker's schema. But the real problem is the invoker has the ability to escalate his privileges. He takes on the privileges of the owner during the call. So in 8i, Oracle introduced invoker's rights. And this was meant to fix the problem. With an invoker's rights model, the developer needs minimal privileges. He still needs privileges, direct grants on the objects used when compiling, but he doesn't need more than that. Data object privileges will be resolved in the invoker's schema, and the invoker, closely associated with that, will require direct privileges, or not even direct privileges, will require privileges on the objects. So the invoker no longer inherits privileges from the invoker no longer inherits privileges from the designer. He's completely reliant on his own privileges. Well that seems to fix the problem. But it introduces the reverse problem. With invoker's rights code, the definer of the code is now inheriting the invoker's privileges, which reverses the situation. Closely associated with that, object references. Object references will be, invoked, will be resolved by the invoker in this case. And that's the potential for massive bugs. Imagine the situation where code refers to say an object which isn't qualified, perhaps via a public synonym. Well, all the invoker has to do is remove that public synonym, and then the code will refer to his own objects. And the definer will know nothing about that. So we have these two issues, that the definer's rights model, the invoker inherits excessive privileges from the definer. With the invoker's rights model, the definer is, has access to the invoker's rights at runtime. Now, let's have a quick look at this in action. So working in 11G for the time being, what I shall do is connect slash as sysdba. I'm, I'm fully aware, of course, that using sys is not exactly the best way to run things, but never mind that. It will do for the purposes of demonstration. Enable screen output. And I'm going to create a little procedure. I'll use this procedure throughout the next 40 minutes or so. So I'll walk through the procedure now so we can see what's going on. Create a replace procedure list amp and give it one parameter pjob, varchar2. What's it going to do? Well, a variable, and that's just a store string I'm going to use with execute immediate. Create a type, the type is a raft cursor, and the type is simply going to be a list of employee names. Then I construct a statement. 
Select ename from scott.emp, note a fully qualified name here. I don't want any problems with where schema name, where object names are going to be resolved. Select ename from scott.emp, where job equals whatever was passed in as an argument up there. So I construct that statement. I'll print it out just to be sure we know what's going on. Open the cursor for the statement and print it out. So a very simple procedure that should simply list the employees of a given department. Just check that it actually does work. So if I execute list emp and pass in the string Clark Smith, Adams, James Miller, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Scott.emp table, so those are the those are the clerks coming through. So that's all my little procedure does. Well, how do we use it? I'll create a user, create user low, a low privileged user identified by low, and grant him the absolute minimum. I'll grant create session, create session to low, and then grant execute on my list amp procedure. to low. Does it work? Connect as my low privilege user, password low, set server output on, and run the code. Execute sys.listamp and retrieve the clocks. There we go. Smith, Adams, James, Miller. Well, that looks straightforward enough. And if I'm logged on as user low, if I try to select star from scott.emp, I get nowhere. So as my low privilege user, my data is protected from him unless he goes through the correct approved code. Define as rights then mean that my user low inherits what is in the code, inherits permission to look at the table. Well, that is, in fact, can potentially be a major problem. Imagine this situation, a fairly standard hacking approach. I'm not going to teach people to hack, so I'm using very basic techniques here that I hope many people are familiar with. Let us say my low privileged user tries to look at a rather dangerous view. Select star from DBA, look at a DBA view. And there's a very useful view indeed, which is users with def pwd. So he's trying to nose around the database, see who exists with this view shows all the users with default passwords. Very useful information if you're trying to break into a database. And of course he can't see it. But what he can do instead is it manipulate things with a SQL injection. So what he will now do, rather than executing the code like that, put in a crafted parameter. So the parameter will give it there. Execute sys.listamp clock, quote, quote, union. Select username and DBA users with def twd, where x equals x. So what happens if he now runs that? Oh dear. This is a classic case of SQL injection. Because what has happened is I fooled the database into running that query which it wasn't intended to run. So there come, back come the users from the M table, but I've also got all these users in the database with default passwords. And this is a very simple example of the danger of code with definers rights. My low privileged user has inherited the permissions of sys for the duration of the call. And the code is so badly written that it permits an injection like that. Pardon, John. There, there was a question in a queue came in a minute ago. I think you're just about to answer it. And the question is, is it possible to prevent SQL injections? It most certainly is. And we're very too pleased to do it. And this code is really badly written. Um, I can do much cleverer SQL injections than this, by the way. Um, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't be professional to show them. There are many ways to prevent that injection. Uh, firstly, instead of using the concatenation of a string, one would use a bind variable. Uh, better still, one would use facilities such as the DBMS assert package to validate what's being put in here. 
as being decent data, we can certainly tighten that up. And I sincerely hope that you would let us do that if your if your systems were vulnerable to such attacks. So that's the danger then. You know, during the process of executing that, my low privilege user inherited the high privileges. So what's the way around it? Well, the way around it is to use invoker's rights. So what I shall do is recreate the procedure. So create or replace the procedure. Auth ID current user. So that's the critical keyword. And that means that when we run the code, it will not run with my rights. It will run with the rights of the person invoking it. Now, I do now have to grant my load privileged user access to the relevant table. I need to grant select on emp to my low privilege user. Oops, scott.emp. Because remember, when low tried to query scott.emp directly, he didn't have permission to do that. So I do now have to give him permission to do that so that when he is within this block of code, he will be able to run that statement. So connect low slash low and run my code. So the official code that he's meant to be running is that. Oops, set server output on. And it works. And if my user then puts in his crafted URL, uh, his crafted parameter, I should say, Use a copy paste. I do have that in a buffer. The crafted URL, that now fails because the code is executing with the invoker's rights and the evoker does not have privileges to look at that. So that seems to fix the problem. Well, it's fixed one of the problems. It means that my invoker no longer inherits privileges from the definer. But that, in fact, reverses the situation. Now, what I shall do is connect slash the sysdba. Um, I'll create another user. I shall create user dev identified by dev. Dev is meant to be my developer. I should qualify that and say my malicious developer. So I'll give him some privileges. I'll give him create session, create procedure, select any table. So that's given my developer, my low-grade developer, the privileges he needs to do his job, but not to do anything dangerous. You know, he will not, for instance, be able to mess about in the data dictionary. All he can do is create code, and his code can hit tables. So connecting as dev, I'll create the procedure. So connect dev slash dev, and then create my code. Thus, we are now assuming that instead of the user being the hacker, it's my developer being the hacker. So what's my hacker done? He's creating the procedure, define uh, invoker's rights, the normal code there, and then he added in at the bottom, execute immediate, grant DBA to dev. Okay. Well, if my user dev tries to do anything at all. If he tries to do anything in these DBA privileges, you know, drop user Scott, he can't do it. Of course he can't, because he doesn't have anything like privileges. But now he's created this. Well, what happens when it gets executed? Well, I shall connect system, password oracle, set server output on. And now we see a high privileged user executes code created by a low privileged user. What happens? He runs the code, Oops. Um, execute, I'll have to execute dev.listemp and retrieve the clocks. And on the face of it, it works. I've retrieved the data I wanted to retrieve. 
according to the parameter I put in. But go back in as dev. And select star from session roles. And hey presto, all of a sudden, he's now got the DBA role and everything else. So that's the reverse of the problem. So to summarize, I'll return to a slide. Privilege escalation, that's what this is all about. Your basic problem is the code with the definer's rights escalates the privileges of the invoker, that's my first SQL injection, whereas invoker's rights escalate the privileges of the definer. So which is more dangerous? Are you worried about malicious users or malicious developers? Well, historically, it was always malicious users. But more and more sites are now outsourcing their development, outsourcing their testing, outsourcing all sorts of things, which means malicious developers are becoming increasingly dangerous. And that's where the invoker's rights model, which for many years was supposed to be a good thing, is now possibly extremely dangerous. You must always consider the possibilities for SQL injection one way or the other. Now, we can, of course, fix all these issues for you. you know, as that question we had earlier came up with, you know, we can fix all your code so that your definer's rights code will not allow crafted URLs if it's a web-based application to come in. Um, for invoker's rights code, we can fix that too. There are techniques and we can go through it. But it's going to take time. It's going to take skill. 